Hi everyone, I'm Andrew, a senior instructor at Katie Byte. I teach the AP Computer Science Prep class at Katie Byte, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. But we just wanted to take a few minutes and tell you about uh, the AP exam, specifically the AP Computer Science A exam. Uh, this is the older of the two exams in computer science that the AP program offers. The other one is computer science principles, sometimes just called CSP uh, instead of CSA. Um, this one is more technical. This one is about practical programming skills and uh, directly applying your knowledge of the Java programming language. It is a language specific exam, whereas the principles exam is a little bit broader and a little bit more flexible in some of the things it asks for. Um, so the AP Computer Science A exam is usually thought of as a little bit more rigorous, more widely accepted as a uh, sort of proof of your actual technical skill. Uh, whereas the other exam is a little bit newer, some colleges are still sort of figuring out uh, how to treat that exam, but it's definitely not as applied as this one. So if you can take this one, it is a really good idea, especially if you're planning to major in engineering or you know, computer science of some kind. Um, so what I have here is the uh, official College Board uh, website for the course and the exam. If you're not familiar with the AP program, there is an AP course description, sort of a, a, a set of topics to cover that many high schools do. And there is a way you can officially sort of audit your course and qualify it as an official AP course. There's also the exam, which is not necessarily linked to the AP course. Uh, you can take other computer science classes and learn about it and still take the exam. But I will say the exam is given through high schools, so you do need to work with what they can do for you uh, with your, your home high school or a local high school. Um, so we're not really here to talk about those logistics, just to tell you more about the exam. But I do recommend checking out this web page. A lot of the pages and documents I'm going to show you in these next couple minutes are right here on this page. So if we scroll down, we can see links to exam description and various documents and things. So the first one I wanted to show is just the basic format of the exam. Uh, it is a three hour exam given in two parts, uh, 90 minutes for multiple choice section and then 90 minutes for a free response question, which in many AP exams would just be like a written essay, but in the computer science exam, it is coding. Um, and they're uh, equally weighted half and half. There are 40 multiple choice questions here. I usually tell my students when they're practicing about two minutes per question plus 10 minutes at the end to check your work or go back to questions you weren't sure about, but it really does vary. Different questions are different lengths. And then there's four free response questions generally broken down into different parts. We'll take a look at some sample questions in a second, um, but uh, there are definitely slight differences in topics. Multiple choice kind of covers a little bit of everything, even some not quite as technical things like software design principles and vocabulary, things like that. Free response section is a little bit more focused on very specifically chosen topics. Now, uh, since 2020, when they did a bit of an update to the exam format, there are four specific topics uh, that students will be asked to cover that will always be given in the same order in the free response question. Uh, so you can see the topics here. We're not going to get into the technical content uh, so much, uh, so students can obviously review this in a lot more detail. But it's very well organized. You sort of know exactly what to expect. And each of these takes about the same amount of time and are equally weighted on the exam uh, in the multiple choice question questions are also equally weighted. And I guess I might as well mention here that there is no penalty for guessing on the multiple choice. So, you know, take a guess, take an educated guess if you're not sure. Um, so we'll take a look at the scoring system. Again, in case you're not familiar with AP exam scores, um, the AP exams are all scored from one to five. And they summarize that here, extremely well qualified, well qualified, qualified possibly, or not willing to recommend anything. Um, overall, Four and five are generally considered pretty good exam scores. One through three considered not great exam scores. So most students would aim for a four or five. Now, let me say something about the difficulty of the computer science exam. Many students do not have an opportunity to learn a lot of computer science before high school. Some students not even too much in their high school. Uh, so uh, the exam is a little bit easier, I would say, compared to other subjects uh, if you are someone who's been taking computer science classes for years and years before you've 
even get to high school. Uh, that's one of the advantages we hope we're, we're giving to our students who have been in our classes for a while. Um, so uh, many colleges, though, do s expect, if they're going to give you credit for a computer science class, um, a five, some colleges will uh, will require a five before they would give you course credit in their university. Uh, and then others would do that for four or five. Now, uh, that's actually still better than, for instance, computer science principles. Many colleges would not give you direct computer science course credit uh, just for doing the principles exam. So uh, definitely, again, this one is very valuable. Uh, now, certainly, again, if you get a four or a five uh, on this exam, that's still excellent. Uh, you don't need to uh, sort of be afraid to report that to an application or something. It's just that that it might not be, uh, they might not view that as being equivalent to a college level class in computer science. Um, so we'll move right along and take a look at the exam topics a little bit. Um, there are these 10 different units. I'm not going to read through all of them, but they're you know weighted a, a certain amount in terms of the distribution, especially on the multiple choice questions. And these cover the same sort of general uh, to intermediate, uh, sorry, beginner to intermediate computer science topics you would see in our courses and uh, a high school uh, course as well. So, uh, yeah, you can look more at the details and sample questions, of course, but uh, basically all the multiple choice questions we see sort of have to do with, with some of these uh, topics. So taking a look at the multiple choice themselves, we're not going to look through all of them, but this one is about tracing code with an eye to primitive types and operations on numbers and that kind of data, uh, which is the first topic you saw there. Uh, this is about strings and dealing with objects, which is the second topic uh, on that previous list. Some of these questions require Require reading some code and interpreting what would happen. Um, some of these questions involve completing a piece of code or picking the right piece of code that uh, to accomplish some sort of task. Some of these are more design questions. For instance, this one here is uh, sort of how well. Okay, I guess I guess this is also about picking the right code. But uh, this is about if statements, which is the third topic that we saw there. Uh, some of them are a little bit broader. So there's a wide variety of ways that they ask question, but most of them are about code, about specifically Java programming um, and how concepts within Java work. Now, if you're someone who hasn't really learned a lot of Java and you're just wondering why is the exam about Java, you do kind of need to do something practical to get um, a sense of actual technical programming skills. Even though Java isn't like the most important language in the world necessarily, it is extremely widely used. It is a very valuable language to know. It's, it's not a bad choice for something that everyone will need to know to take this exam. And the fact is many programmers learn fairly quickly, especially after they start to learn a second language, that uh, skills you have in languages other than Java, many of them carry over. So yes, there are technical details to know about Java, but uh, a lot of students for, who have only learned Python might actually be able to do pretty well on a lot of these questions uh, just after they've, they've only worked with Java for a little while. Um, so we will take a look at a sample free response question as well. These are quite long. They often involve some code that is already written and then some uh, additional code that the students need to write to complete the problem. So we have a class here, which is part of a concept of object-oriented programming uh, called a gizmo. It has various methods that are defined. And then we have to write a different class that deals with gizmos and does something specific with tracking gizmos, including a list of gizmos that have been purchased. So this is a bit of a real life scenario, but with sort of made up details. Uh, but it's all, again, part of the idea of having students show their ability to write code that actually works in a specific context. So that's basically the exam overview. Now to wrap up this little video, I just wanted to mention uh, a little bit about our courses as well as what your typical high school course structure might be. At Katie Byte, uh, our upper level courses, which are basically high school level courses, uh, are four and five, and then there's college level courses at six. You know, there could be a little overlap between all, a lot of these, but uh, that's basically where these fall. So to be well prepared for the AP exam, we definitely would recommend students do the equivalent of these two years of coursework. Uh, this is roughly equivalent to how high schools would often give uh, their uh, AP courses to students, which is to have some kind of maybe freshman year or sophomore year introductory programming course, and then an AP level sort of, yeah, high, high, higher level course. Uh, and that would be equivalent to our 5A and 5B. Now, occasionally you might find a high school that doesn't really have an intro course and just throws students right into the AP level. But certainly at Katie Byte, we do only have 
you know, one class per week since we're not a, a full time uh, in person school. So we definitely recommend you, you know, build up to this and don't just dive right in unless you've had previous programming experience. Now, for students who are getting to this point, maybe even while they're still in middle school, we absolutely would recommend at least taking core class 6A. It does cover a couple specific problem solving techniques called algorithms, which come up in certain ways on the exam, even though they're not major topics. So if we have a high school student coming to us and they really you know, want to be prepared to take the exam and maybe even take it in 10th grade, uh, which is you know, a year before most students take most of their AP exams, which means a little less pressure on you, um, we would say you, know, you can go ahead and prepare for it even after this class. But if you have time, it is nice to take the other one. And then that brings me to the AP prep class that we offer. This is a spring only class built directly to look at AP exam problems. So it is not an official year-long in-school AP course with five hours of course material per week. Uh, the, you know, our school doesn't run in the format to support that. But between our core classes over two years or, or four semesters, depending the schedule you take it, as well as the prep class, all of our students have tended to find that the exam is, is quite well prepared through that content. Uh, so, uh, some students choose to combine our classes with their high school classes, some students just work with us, some students just take their high school courses and maybe, you know, skip some of this content or take some of our elective content instead. So there's a lot of ways to do it, but that's the overview. So hopefully that was helpful and uh, good luck on your exam.